patch of green space in mostly run-down South Tel Aviv. Levinsky Park is a hub of activity and living area of African refugees, Southeast Asian foreign workers, artists, students, streetwalkers, and junkies. Near the central bus station, the park is named for Elchanan Leib Levinsky, a Lithuanian Jew who moved in the 1880s to pre-state Israel, then called Palestine. Bordering the park is a bustling commercial hodgepodge, including eateries offering Eritrean injera, a yeast-risen flatbread with a unique spongy texture, and a Darfurian-owned computer store. Most of the roughly 35,000 refugees and asylum seekers in Israel fled armed conflict, civil war, and fear of persecution in Eritrea, Sudan, Darfur, the Congo, and Ivory Coast. Nearly 100,000 migrant workers are undocumented. Of both these population groups, more than 20,000 live around and sometimes in Levinsky Park. There is no minimum rule of People prisoners for unlimited time. You don't know anything. You, you can't communicate with them, and uh, nobody knows they are whereabouts. Were Were you tortured? Of course. Why not? We were tortured from the university. We were arrested for four days in the desert. Really? And yeah, because we 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 asked the government follow the rule of law at least. And how did you get away from that? Yeah, but okay. how did you get here? Most of us through Egypt. Through Egypt? Yeah. Many Tel Aviv bomb shelters intended to serve populations during a possible airstrike double in times of peace as artist studios. In Levinsky Park, the bomb shelter doubles as a volunteer-run multilingual public lending library for foreign workers and refugee adults and children. Donors have provided more than 2,500 volumes in Amharic, Arabic, Bengali, Chinese, English, French, Hindi, Mandarin, Nepalese, Romanian, Spanish, Tagalog, and Thai. The children's section is rich with Hebrew books. On days the library is open, kids sprawl on the wooden inner surface of their bookcase, playing chess and checkers, reading and drawing, and being read to. Maureen's Shine International Ministry in the Levinsky Park area feeds hungry people and engages kids in music, art, and field trips. At the weekly basketball club, she supplies balls from her wondrous U.S. Army surplus backpack stamped in green letters, humanitarian aid. When pro player Josh Gomes stopped by to coach the international team, they begged the gentle, towering American to notice and play with them. When 11-year-old Joseph recognized him from TV coverage, he gasped in Hebrew, He's a real player! He's a real player! His 8-year-old brother, Jono, pronounced, He's very tall. What about your friend here? High school students routinely come to the park on assignment to conduct research. Right now, my dream is to get married and have a family. It's good for him to practice. You want Korean to get married and live here? In Israel? No, in the... Uh, in this neighborhood? No. Imagine <laughs> Lama. Passover, which commemorates the flight of the ancient Israelites from Egyptian bondage, is our original Independence Day.
It marks the transformation from a nation of slaves to a sovereign people, from a collection of tribes to a nation of law. We retell the liberation story to our children each year at the ritual Seder meal ceremony. And through our storytelling, we can internalize the lessons and notice contemporary parallels. Since 2007, the joint Passover Seder for Israelis and African refugees and asylum seekers in Israel has become an annual expression of collective remembering turned into action. Partners from across the spectrum of Israeli communal and Jewish life and international humanitarian agencies create this event in the Levinsky Park basketball court to engage participants and thousands more through social media, with the issues of asylum and slavery, refugee rights, ideas of freedom and oppression, in a contemporary flavor to this ancient festival. <laughs>